you can't go wrong with Now It's Dark. Hey everybody, welcome to Now It's Dark. I'm Jim. I just saw the movie The Front Door. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the YouTube Partnership Program for providing, as part of the perks, um, a free movie ticket to use. And uh, I used it on this film. I almost said wasted. Um, but uh, again, yeah, that was a, a nice perk for people that are monetized to uh, have that. So this, the front room, if you're not familiar with, uh, because the marketing was very overshadowed by Beetlejuice, which has released at the same time. And I chose to see the front room um, because I felt uh, maybe a little sorry for it, for having to go up against the hype of Beetlejuice. And I didn't think maybe that it would be in the theaters for very long. Um, and uh, this was a movie that I was anticipating seeing. It's an A24 film. It's a horror thriller. It tells the story of a newly pregnant couple who are forced to take in an ailing, estranged stepmother. Directed by Max and Sam Eggers. Written by Susan Hill and Max and Sam Eggers. Starring... The iconic Brandy Norwood as Belinda, not Belinda, Belinda. Her husband Norman, played by Andrew Burnap, and uh, the accomplished actress Catherine Hunter as Solange. Um, those are our main uh, group there. Solange being the uh, stepmother. So this movie. Um, didn't end up being exactly what I was kind of expecting. And that's the tough part when you uh, watch trailers and you kind of get a certain uh, idea in your head of what the story is going to be about. And when you're tagged as a horror, um, you know, your mind kind of wanders a little bit into the territory that this could have gone. And so we meet Brandy and Norman. Uh, they're struggling. Brandy's pregnant. Uh, she is a, I, I want to say a professor, but it could have been a teacher at a, like a, 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 a school for higher education. It wasn't uh, like a normal high school or anything like that. And the students seemed to be of an older age. So I'm going to say she was in a college. Um, she she feels like she's being squeezed out, uh, so she's got the stresses of that. She's questioning whether or not um, she's fit to be a mother. And when she starts kind of explaining that to Norman, uh, I could tell already that at some point we were going to find out that they had lost a child uh, previously. And, of course, we did. It's a little tropey and... Uh, it was not even necessary, really, to, to be honest, although it does kind of come up once uh, later on in the story. Norman, uh, this character, I, I don't love <laughs> when we have couples and there is just like this wimpy kind of weird vibe that a husband gives. It just... Um, and I don't know that that, like, his pre-movie character, if we were to, like, see prequel, his relationship with his wife, Brandy, I'm sure that they were both very strong people. But what happens is Norman uh, receives a call that his father is dying with cancer, and uh, it brings back, like, some childhood trauma. And he kind of explains that to his wife. And, you know, she's like, well, we should go see your father. And he's very insistent. No. Story goes on a little bit more. It's a very, very slow movie. Very slow burn. And it really doesn't pick up to the level that I was expecting. So the father passes away. They do go to the funeral. Norman is, like, reduced to like the shell of a man in my opinion like it it, it was just uh, i don't like characters like that so it was hard like i don't ever feel empathy for those characters and i don't feel you know like i'm supposed to probably 
um, feel for those types of characters. And Brandy, while being pregnant, we know, you know, that movies have taught us that she's going to be like the strong character through the movie. Well, with the with the father passing away, we are finally introduced to the stepmother Solange, who we heard about the horrible childhood that Norman had, uh, particularly because of Solange and her uh, strong conviction in Christianity and faith. And um, yeah, so with the father dying, we get the will and everything is going to be left to Norman and Brandy with the proviso of her being allowed to live her final years with them in her home. And so Brandy uh, being naive and not necessarily believing all of the horrible things that Norman had told her previously, you know, they're looking at it on the financial aspect of, you know, she's pregnant. She's going to be out of a job. She actually quits it. Um, and Norman is a kind of aspiring to be a better lawyer than what he is in his current state. And so they reluctantly, you know, they take her in. And this is where we start getting the dynamic between Brandy and Solange. And honestly, like, I think Brandy's performance was really good. And the Catherine Hunter as Solange was I thought really, really good. And she's like a creepy old lady. There's definitely some very disgusting scenes um, worthy of the R rating. And it's interesting, though, that it didn't go into the religious um, supernatural line that I was waiting for. It goes in a just She's really annoying, and she does have some sort of insight. She's just really annoying. And there's a big racist racism card played in the movie at one point. And, like, I think if we could have trimmed some of that out, um, like, I don't know if there was a message that was supposed to be being played, and I don't know that it even really was vital to the background of Solange. Like she could just be a racist. We didn't have to have like a lot of time dedicated to the back and forth and in the history of Solange. I was, I would have been more interested in her background of how she's kind of gotten to where she is with kind of some of her abilities. And that doesn't make a lot of sense unless you see the movie. Um, but she goes, uh, you know, quietly, like, eh, not even necessarily quietly, but she, she starts to really invade um, Brandy's character. I've already forgotten her name, Belinda, uh, her, her space, and, and really wants to be the dominant mother figure in the household. And Norman is just, you know, a pussy at this point. And um, there is some very, you know, suggestive imagery and uh, Belinda's having like visions and in her dreams and things. And, and there was some definite gore involved with that. Solange as an elderly uh, person started also uh, uh, experiencing some uncontrollable bowel issues. And that was shown. Um, so there's definitely some grossness. It's not gore by any means. There's, you know, I, I just, I don't know that horror tag uh, would have fit for this. I really was thinking it was going to be a lot more intense than it was. A lot more Solange being like very dominant and spiritual, but also next level rather than just preachy. And, you know, there's moments where she's speaking in tongues and she wants to touch and, and lay hands uh, would be the term, but man, I think this movie really just missed for me. And, and maybe that was my expectations. I just thought this was going to be more of a kind of like that religious supernatural 
tier of movies, if that makes sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you're kind of following what I'm saying, if you smell what The Rock is cooking. But it is a thriller. It's just very, very slow. Um, there's some scenes, you know, through the movie. I, I watched so many movies. And some of the scenes were a little predictable. I was like, oh, okay, they've just said this thing. Later on, I'm going to witness this happening. And then it does. So that also took away a little bit. The suspense part wasn't very suspenseful. <coughs> they do introduce at the end a little twist but it's not even a really surprising twist um it's just kind of like you know the end and this movie had put me in such a bad not bad mood but just the meh mood that i as soon as the screen went black after the final screen i was already standing up and then the credits rolled I haven't done that since I was a kid. I was just ready to get out of the theater. I probably was out of the theater and at my car before Brandy's name even scrolled up the thing. If there's an end credit scene that I missed that would have just made this movie a blockbuster for me, then shame on me for walking out so fast. But this movie really doesn't um, do it for me. If you've seen this, let me know in the comments down below. A movie that I went to for free isn't ever a bad movie. So, you know, I didn't shell out any money for this. So that's a good thing. But my my feeling sorry for this movie and choosing it over Beetlejuice to use that free ticket with. I'm really kicking myself now. Really kicking myself. I did get a uh, fantastic uh one of the uh, cheap paper, I'm not uh, rich enough to afford like that, the cool popcorn buckets, but I did get one with Beetlejuice on it. So, I mean, I, I got this popcorn bucket, so it's not all bad and I didn't pay for the movie. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think uh, or what you thought this movie was gonna be like, if you've seen it, you know, maybe I'm just being overcritical because I had higher expectations, but. That's going to do it for this review of the A24 film, The Front Room. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Keep checking back to the channel for more great stuff.